Hey, Burrow Biker here. But anyway, the CRF 230L got sold. Was looking around for another bike, and I picked up this Kawasaki 2017 X300, the Versus X300. Relatively new bike. It resembles the the 650 only this is they call it the x300 a lot of people are saying it's 300 cc's it's not it's 296 cc's and I got it on Monday I have about 80 miles on it and I'm really loving this bike Kawasaki I think hit a home run with this bike uh, it's just what I was looking for the 230L was more of a dual sport for the dirt I'm 5'5 five, five and 200 pounds, and that thing in the dirt was okay for me. Not fast enough on the highway. This is going to be plenty fast for me on the highway. It's really not a dirt bike. I think my dirt bike days are over. I went to land between the lakes in Kentucky a few weeks ago. I don't like riding over 8 inch diameter loose boulders and tree trunks. And I couldn't walk for three days, so, and I'm old. My dirt biking days are over. Kawasaki Versus X300. It comes standard with this, what do you call this thing, luggage pack or whatever. The sidebars, you can put uh, you can put panniers on it. I imagine there's going to be a lot of aftermarket things coming out once this bike catches on. It's the first year for this particular model. What's really neat, and I'm going to go for a ride a little bit later, this got a slipper clutch on it, which you hardly have to use at all. The faster you shift, the better this machine likes it. It's really fabulous. Uh, the mirrors, the mirrors are pretty good. You can, see, you can see a lot, you know, past your elbows, past your shoulders. I don't have to worry about that. And what other neat thing I like about this is it comes with this windshield. I didn't know whether that was going to do a whole lot or not, but that thing works fabulous. It really cuts down on the wind. Um, maybe it's because I'm short and all the wind goes over my head, but uh, it, it's really pretty effective. Of course, it's got the turn signals and everything on it. There's a front view of it. I'm going to go for a ride in a little bit and uh, show you how it works out. I can't think of anything else I want to say about it. It's got a oil window. It doesn't have a dipstick on it, and the oil window's down in here. But you almost have to have somebody hold the bike up so you can crawl down there and look at your oil level. Or you've got to have a, a, a lift or whatever. I've got one at home. I still have to see whether that lift's going to work on this bike. I'm going to do a, a bunch of other videos, too. But all in all, I'm liking this bike. It's pretty nice. The seat height is is pretty good for me it's a little bit higher than the CRF 230 but I can I can touch the ground on it I'm going to show you a few things here on the handlebar controls these things on the end I imagine they're there in case you drop the bike over it's going to set on here if you go right sideways and it's not going to hit your uh, your levers there of course you got the key There you go. I still got to get used to how that works. You got the tachometer here. It's analog. You notice it goes up to 12,000 RPMs for, for a red line. This is a real uh, high revving bike, but I don't think you have to worry about it. You got a neutral indicator here, neutral here in green. This is uh, the heat engine, and it's not started. I'll go ahead and start it, see how it sounds. Electronic uh, fuel injection is really good. Starts up every time. Sounds really good too. It's got, now I don't know how close, I don't know how sunny is and how close you can see the controls on here, but up here it's got a fuel gauge, which is kind of neat. Got a temperature gauge here for the engine. It's got a, a, a gear indicator, which is kind of nice, so you know what gear you're in when you're riding. It also shows right here 82 miles. It's got a trip indicator of or a trip uh, A and B. Press this thing. It gives you average miles per gallon. And I don't know if you can see that, but I'm getting 76 miles a gallon right now. Although this is the break-in period. 
they don't want you going too fast on this bike right now so I'm kind of keeping it under 4,000 uh, RPMs because I don't want to break it in properly but I can't wait to be able to go and wind this thing out and see what it's going to do I'm not going to do that today I'll wait until the break-in period they're telling me 600 miles I'll take it in for the first service and then I'm going to do another uh, video after I do that you can get a, a power socket here, like a cigarette lighter adapter in here. I'm not sure what this is for. I think it might be for a heated grip uh, control or something. Of course, gas is right here. Another neat thing that this has, it's got four wheel flashers. Not four wheel, but four, four way flashers where the turn signals uh, flash. All you do is press the button there. This is kind of neat. I actually used that last night. I was riding uh, at night on a country road and around the turn there was a, an accident. There was a squad car there. So I turned that on to alert the drivers behind me. That came in really handy. So I got to use that already. Of course you got, you got the horn. You got the high beams here, low beams. The turn signals, they're not self-canceling. You have to press the button to turn them off. I had that on my CRF 230L, which I kind of get used to. Although it would be nice to have self-canceling uh, turn signals, but that's not a uh, that's not a deal breaker. I'm gonna go ahead and buckle up my helmet here. Go for a little ride. Now, keep in mind, I'm not gonna wind this thing out because I don't wanna I don't wanna go over the the break-in period thing. But I'm I'm still getting used to shifting with the with the slipper clutch, so. I'm going to try to show you how fast you have to shift with that thing. But all in all, this is a fabulous bike. Um, I bought it at Sloan's in Murfreesboro. The nicest people you ever want to meet are over there. It's a great dealership. If you're going to buy a bike, I'd say go there. I mean, if you live in Kentucky, if you live in Alabama, make the trip. They're well worth it. They'll, they'll work with you. They're nice people. All right, here we go. Enough commercial for Sloan's. Maybe they'll give me something free. But anyway, here we go. Here we go, the slipper clutch. See how quick that goes? I gotta keep it under 4K. We're gonna go out on the road. I was a little at a little park here in uh, Murfreesboro. Still kind of getting used to the already in fifth gear you'll notice that you really this thing it wants to be wound out pretty much right away I think in the manual the I mean the first gear as soon as you as soon as you take off you got to shift into second but the thing really wants to go it, it rides very well the seat is is better than the CRF 230 L seat which is like sitting on concrete this one doesn't seem to be too bad right now. I guess it could be a little a little softer, but that's easily fixed. You can get like a gel pad, actually to put over the seat if you want. Or you could get a, a new seat, or what I did with my Harley, I've got a 2000 electric glide. You can actually send your seat in to a company, and I can't remember who it was. They'll shave it down and they'll put a gel insert in it. And man, did that make a big difference on that Harley. I think you could ride all day with that. So anyway, I may, may end up doing that, but we'll see. All right, here we go. See how quick you got to shift there? Cancel the turn signals, but I'm already in sixth gear. But the quicker you shift with that slipper clutch, the better off this bike likes it. And I don't want to go any faster than this. I mean, the speed limit here is 40 miles an hour, so I'm going to try to obey the law. But I don't want to go any faster for the first at least 600 miles. The manual, the Kawasaki manual, actually says 1,000 miles. But I don't know if that's being a little extreme or a little bit overcautious uh, with that figure. But I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to keep it under control, if I can, for the first 600 miles. And I don't know how the wind is. I, I had some problems with this microphone. But it's, it's pretty windy today. I'm getting the wind blowing from uh, my right to the left. 
but there's no wind coming from me from the front across that windshield and that thing I don't know it just works really good Kawasaki really thought I think through on this bike oh man I can't wait to wind this thing out really wind it out but we'll see what happens I think Kawasaki really thought this bike through before they uh, before they put it on the market now there is a little insert in the manual that says this bike is not intended for off-road use so this is not if you want a dirt bike this isn't it but I would think if you go and I think there's a there's a guy on YouTube that's run some videos that has a, another channel oh, I can't remember his name when I do the editing I'll put it on there but he's taken this thing on a lot of the, the fire roads where he lives and I'll, I'll put a link to his channel and you can see that it can do mild and even some difficult stuff he's gone over but I don't know if I would want to do that but you can go probably a, a fire road a dirt road a little bit of gravel but I wouldn't recommend jumping a log with this thing or going down a 45 degree hill with with 10 inch uh, diameter boulders that are loose and look like bowling balls which I did with the CRF 230 I made it down the hill okay but uh, I don't know, that's not my idea of fun anymore. I'm just an old guy and I just want to cruise. I wanted to have something a little bit smaller than the Harley. But, uh, and I think this is the bike. I'll just be quiet for a little bit. I don't know how much uh, distortion I'm getting from the wind, but from the microphone. But uh, I'll be quiet for a little bit, do a little bit of rolling around these turns. Plus, when you get new tires, they recommend not really leaning this thing over too far because they put some type of chemical or what on new tires to preserve them. And you've got to drive, they're telling me, at least 150 miles to wear that coating off. And I've got 84 miles right now. so. And I think the, I think you got to put a certain amount of miles on. I see the range finder. It says I can go right now on what I have in this tank. I can go another 242 miles. I think this is, if I'm not wrong, it's a four and a half gallon tank. That's another thing that Kawasaki thought about. I mean, they thought of everything on this bike. And I'm really liking it. It is pretty windy today. They do have another color scheme in the 2017. It's like a two-tone gray. I didn't like that. I wanted the Kawasaki green. I think it's a little bit more visible. And I don't know if you can see my helmet. It's it's orange, orange. There's a nice subdivision there. You could say, hey, uh, Charlie's in find my house. It's the it's the brown one. <laughs> anyway, they're all brown. So anyway, this is the 2017 Kawasaki X300. The only thing I don't like about it, I can't wind it out yet. And uh, that's a little frustrating, but what are you going to do? It's just a beautiful day here in uh, Middle Tennessee. Again, I'm going to be putting up a few more videos as I progress through the bike. And uh, after I put the 600 miles on it, I guess I'll be able to open it up and let you know what kind of uh, highway speed I can get out of this thing. But... Uh, so far, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Alrighty.